<laughs> hey doodlers, how you doing? It's, uh, it's a very snowy day up on Dartmoor, as you can see. Uh, it's really, really cold, but that doesn't mean to say, even when it's cold, you're not thinking about the next sketch you're gonna do, the next doodle you're gonna do. World's worst husky. It's my it was the best. Oh, it's that again. There's loads of people sledging. I don't know if you can see behind me. I've just seen someone coming down the hill in a laundry basket, using a laundry basket as a sledge. Genius. With everyone running around and having loads of fun, it seems like a really good time to talk about movement. take some of these inspirations and take them back to the studio and see what we can do to turn them into drawings and turn them into doodles. So we're back in the warm and dry and it's time to get drawing. I'm going to draw, I'm going to draw an illustrator falling over in the snow to start with. Did you hear me? It was quite painful, I won't lie to you. So I'm taking a circle and a square I'm going to use a circle and square for all the drawings. Um, just adding some really simple arms and legs. Basically, just it's almost like a stick man at the minute. His little mouth. Screaming in horror, as you might have heard. So you can see, sort of by taking that circle and taking that rectangle and putting a bit of a tilt on that rectangle, putting a head to the side, it suddenly starts to already add a bit of movement. I'm gonna add a scarf. Now, things like props, like scarves and hats are a really good way of adding movement. Because we've got the scarf going off to one side, it sort of gives the impression that the person's falling over out of balance, like it's just moved. All these little things are really good when adding to your character. Let me start to add a bit of detail. Got some movement on the arms. Imagine the arms are kind of like waving round like you're like you're falling over and toppling. Add some more detail. Yeah, let's have a hat as well. Hat toppling off. Again, it all kind of helps to add to the movement. The shadow underneath is again um, helps it kind of place that someone's standing on one leg. I've added a few little shadows down the left hand side and behind the scarf to give it more of a 3D look. Coloured in the hat, bottom of the hat. This isn't going to be too, a, a sort of really neat drawing, it's just, you know, a quick sketch. So I'm going to do another one now. Again, I'm using going to use circles and squares. Uh, there was a lot of people throwing snowballs, so I'm going to do uh, a little girl throwing a snowball. So again, I've done a circle and uh, a square sort of tilting to the side. What I also do is when I draw the arms, I use one continuous line. So starting off on the left and kind of going to the right where it's holding the snowball. Because it's one line, it, it makes it like the arms are joined up to your body, if that makes sense. Let's add a cup ponytail. Let's get a leg like she's, like, almost like she's throwing a baseball, if you can imagine that. Just hand, again, we're not wor too worried about the detail, it's, it's keeping the drawing quite loose. I've got, there's a few people who threw snowballs at me. I think I've just got one of those faces. A couple of little circles on the snowball just to give the impression of the hand again. We don't have to draw all the hand. It's like the hand is behind the snowball. Make some of these lines a little bit thicker. Again, that shadow underneath. So you can see that she's standing on one leg. She's got an evil look on her face, hasn't she? 
Because most people who throw snowballs at me have got an evil look on their face. Little bows on the hair. And those little shaky lines after the arm, like the arm's about to throw. There we go. I've rubbed away some of the lines. Getting a really good rubber is is such a good idea when you're draw, doing some drawing, because um, it, it, as much as you you draw when you're an illustrator and a cartoonist, you're, it's also about what you take away. Um, so I've got myself um, a nice rubber. Get in some of those, work in some of those details. So I'm going to do and one more drawing. Again, it's that circle and that square. Keeping it really simple with the shapes. That's that one continuous movement with the arms. So it looks like they're joined up. This person uh, is going to be pushing like a giant um ball of snow that they're about to turn into a snowman someone had made one of these and people were pushing it around and it was huge i didn't quite get capture it on camera so i'm going to do a drawing of it um and so yeah this is probably the first time that we've we've drawn anyone from behind just coloring the hair and get the big snowball yeah, I think that might be a bit too big. I have to change that because you, you don't want the feet higher than the snowball. This is what you see when I'm drawing the hair. You can see what I mean about getting the rubber and, and working, working out some of those little lines on the black hair. Help with the detail. There we go. I've made the snowball smaller now. There you go, and this has some shading underneath, so it looks like they're pushing it. You're trying to get the, trying to get like the character heaving and almost like the snowball's really heavy, even though it's just a drawing. Again, getting those little movement lines in. Let's draw a hand. You can see the snowball is kind of behind the person's body. Now I've just rubbed out that little line, which makes it look like it's sort of disappearing behind the body. Add a bit of shading down the right hand side. A bit more shading underneath the arms. Just help it stand out and make it look a little bit more 3D. That's looking pretty good. A few more thicker lines on the bottom of the snowball. And we'll talk about shading and the weight of lines and making some lines thick in the right places in future episodes. Let's add a little eye. There we go. So here's all three of them. And you can still see the simple shapes they're made up of, but you know what we're doing is we're messing around with the shapes, we're tilting them. One thing I do if I'm not sure how someone should look, I'm kind of, how does that look if I'm throwing a snowball, for instance? I might stand in front of a mirror and kind of pull funny poses, and that's a really good way of sort of seeing, oh, yeah, that's how the arm should be. There we are, really simple shapes, and you can just play around with these simple shapes again using that arm as one continuous movement coming up with different characters different poses just keeping things loose just experimenting lots of little poses all the time you might go oh that one looks like it might turn into a character I really like the way I've drawn that why is that working those kind of things so this one cheering so there we go. How to take circle squares and by moving them around, adding those movement lines, we can start to add movement into our drawings. Uh, and it just adds more character to the characters you're drawing. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode and I shall see you very soon on Doodle Do It. Until then, happy doodling. <laughs>